my next guest is one of the breakout stars from Bravo's hit reality show, Vanderpump Rules, which follows the heated drama among staffers at Lisa Vanderpump's LA restaurants. Well, for six seasons, Lala Kent has built a reputation for being one of the most outspoken cast members on the show, and she's never one to shy away from who she is. In fact, during her time in the spotlight, Lala has faced some very difficult personal challenges, including a battle with alcohol, the death of her beloved father, and even a public breakup with her fiance, Randall Emmett, which has been one of the hot tabloid topics out there, and that cannot be easy to deal with publicly. But despite what life throws her, Lala tries to stay positive and is candidly sharing her highs and the lows in her weekly podcast and a tell-all memoir. And she even has an upcoming live tour, all of them called Give Them Lala, which is her signature mantra. Please, let's give it up for Lala Kent. I love this. Congratulations on Thank everything. You. Tell me, give them Lala, because I've written a novel, and, and I know when you're in the meetings, they want to know the title of the book. This seemed obvious, but it is such a powerful statement. Even the audience reacted, give them Lala. What does that mean to you? You know, it started in my very vain young mind, give the people what they want, right? I was like 24. What did you think they wanted at 24? Lala, of course. Yeah. <laughs> You know, as I evolved as a person, it meant something so much more. Be exactly who you are yeah. and do not apologize for it. But that's a, and that's a journey. I mean, listen, I laugh because at 24, I give them Tamron. I didn't even know who Tamron was. Exactly. So the fact that you had some idea, I was like, student loan debt check, give them that, give them that, give me that. I had no idea. But you, you figured out, it seems, early, and I think it is in part um, to your openness about sobriety and that journey that you've, you've been sober now three years? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. Yeah. Thank you. Um, keeping a positive attitude when those dark days are in front of you, when you're in the room crying, when you're trying to, I guess, talk with your sober, whatever coach, the people around you, those are painful. How did you maintain optimism? I have a very profound relationship with my higher power. Mm. And when anything gets to be too difficult, like we've all experienced, I have to hand it over to God. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting because obviously in this reality TV world, you know, which is, is and people love the show and they love you on the show, there's always a balance of what is real, what's, you know, edited, mm -hmm. and who the heart is. And it seems that your heart is really shown the fans, this, this, this person, to your point, that looks to a higher power. And this is not a, reality, a religious show, but I wake up every morning and I pray because that's how I get my feet on solid ground. Right. When you're going through a breakup like you did, I mean, you're a new mom, Ocean, and congratulations. Thank you. She's so freaking cute. <laughs> Thank you. But you're going through, oh, look at that face. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Um, when you're going through a public breakup, like you are, we all know that breakups can just, they tear your heart out, there's a hole in your heart, and you're dealing with it publicly. How did you handle that and keep smiling even when everyone's prying and digging and wanting the tea? Mm -hmm. And it hurts, the tea is your life. Right. Um, that face we just saw is what keeps me going every single day of my life. Yeah. I don't have an option to sit back and cry. I, I have a child to provide for. Um, and I, I, I wanna make this very known. If you have anybody in your life, burn the bridge if they are not adding to it. You will be okay, I promise you. Where, where in your life did you learn that to be true? The moment that I'm in right now, the second that I found out that the person I was sleeping next to for six years was nothing like who I thought he was. And that's a very terrifying thing to think about. And there's so much that I know that I've chosen not to share. I've kept it very vague. Um, and I had no choice but to leave. Mm. And in that moment, I was like, we are strong. I mean, we don't give ourselves enough credit. Like, 
here I am, and I'm okay. I never thought that I would be okay without that person. Really? No. Mm. I think so many people, and I am obviously most of our audience consists of women, most of our viewers are women, and I, I try to look at life through the lens of human, but in reality, to your point, having that baby, now you're raising her mm -hmm. um, on your own in, in many ways, um, but knowing you're gonna be okay, that's tough. Cause that you're looking at her and she's you're her backup plan. Right. She's dependent on me. And I'm very lucky. I have an incredible mother. Yeah. I have she's she's my co-parent. She's my support Aww. system. So it's just so strange to see that I now my child is going to look at me the same way that I'm looking at my mama. Well, you just melted my heart <laughs> with that. Coming up, Lala's life on Vanderpump Rules, the good, the bad, the difficult. We have more, and how many pictures can we see of that baby? I hope more, because that's the cutest baby. After the break. <laughs> we are back, and we're talking to guests who find the positive even when life gets difficult. And still with us is Vanderpump Rules star, Lala Kent, who's been opening up about the highs and lows of her life in her new memoir, Give Them Lala. Um, Lala, you, we talked a little bit about the, the loss of your father. It's been four years almost now, and yes. it's played out on the show. Um, it's such a sweet picture. Mm -hmm. um, in your book, when you on your sobriety struggle, you said, um, when your dad died in 2008, that I was in complete and utter denial. I had a problem, a problem that was spiraling out of my control. And then you went on to write, I was completely out of tune with every emotion except the one telling me to order another drink buy another bottle, down another shot. You've been through it. And you're here, <laughs> and you're strong, and you're, you. you're sharing this with other people. <laughs> I know in relationships, you know, we can see the light sometimes. Like hopefully there's gonna be a better day and somebody better for me. But the loss of a parent. Mm. Um, when I lost my dad, I tell people, it's like a, we went to a commercial break and the central character was gone. And I thought, what, wait a minute, what just happened here? Yeah. How did you deal with finding the light with loss and mm. grief? It, my last drink was exactly six months after my dad had passed. And I always say, my dad allowed me six months to grieve him in a way that was not productive. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, my, my world completely crumbled in that moment when I got that call. Sorry. No, be sorry. He was so incredible, and I feel so fortunate that he was mine. Um, but when I got sober, because that was the way I was grieving, was numbing everything inside of me. And when I decided I'm getting sober, I almost felt my dad being like, you're better than this, like you can do this. And it was like, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel, the elephant came off of my chest and I said, I'm never picking up a drink again. I'm taking my life back. I mean, you have, as they say, quite a story, and you've told it so beautifully in your memoir. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. Congratulations on being a survivor. Thank and you. And a great mom. <laughs> and we can't wait to see what's next for you. You're you, awesome. You're, you're awesome. awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> the book, Give Them Lala, is now in paperback and studio audience. You know how we do it. You're all going home with a copy of Lala's book. It is so inspiring.